you get a reference, and you get a reference, and you get a reference. This episode is a library of references. I love that kind of stuff. And that may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I don't see anything wrong with weaving in some fun callbacks, if it's a good premise. And this one was fun. Maybe not as funny as Quid's game. He went down like a sack of shoes. But Fry going on vacation, getting replaced by a temp, uh, what's his name? Frank. Made for a good episode. Who the hell is he? Look, I'm a Futurama fan to my core. I understand that not every episode is going to be a banger. Please, just wake up. Hell, most of them will probably be mid. The opening subtitle even takes a stab at the quality of the show. But my goal with this channel is to showcase our love for Futurama. Good luck, buddy! And not just be a grumpy old critic. You sound just like my tennis instructor! So let's put on our Futurama fan badges and see how many references we can find. Like and subscribe to the channel. Let's go already! Before we get into all the references, there are a few things I want to point out. Starting with, uh... Frank! Oh, oh. He was so forgettable. Who the hell is he? Getting stranded for 23 years, his temp agency never even bothering looking for him, and at the end, his downfall was his forgettableness. The crew never even finished their plan to escape. They just left him stranded. Again. It's great stuff. At Lur and in Indu Indu's anniversary, man, do the Omicronians hate Vals or what? Their god and even their enemies are only consonants. You're under the watchful eye of Javiver on the hairy hills of Badunkdunk. Anyway, it seems they also have Jewish traditions in their weddings. <laughs> Hermes thinking Zoidberg is getting called a Crab Rangoon was pretty funny. Is that Crab Rangoon? No, he's Dr. Zoidberg. We also get another example of Leela's strength. Nobody invited me to kick your ass either. Check out my Strongest Futurama Characters video here. Damn. As she one-shots this Omicronian woman. Hi! <laughs> There are also a lot of jokes about Fry's hygiene. A long-running gag. Why is there yogurt in this cap? He even has his soap labeled as unopened. Now let's get to the references. Like Leela beginning the episode in the style of a Star Trek captain's log. Captain's diary. Stardate. Captain's log. Stardate. When they go to dump the books, they do it on a planet called Dalton B in the Barnes and Nebula. References to B. Dalton and Barnes & Noble's bookstores. It's a small planet in the Barnes & Nobula. On Dalton B, the planet is infested with these one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple paper eaters. Good thing it wasn't the other one. One-eyed, one-horned, flying purple paper eaters. When Fry is whipping the frosting for Bender, I wondered if this might be a reference to I Love Lucy. <laughs> After they pick up, um... Frank! He goes to clean up in the bathroom. And he uses a neat little invention modeled after everyone over the age of 30's brief memory of the Wooly Willies toy. And the professor makes a comment about getting radiation from Mary Curie. Oh my, yeah. The mother of radioactivity and cancer treatments using radium. Now the references that tie into past episodes. Starting with the professor claiming that they're underwater. If I'm reading this correctly, we're underwater. Calling back to the time they were underwater in the Deep South. How many atmospheres can the ship withstand? Well, it's a spaceship, so I'd say anywhere between zero and one. Bender is seen baking another cake, even grander than the one he made in I Second That Emotion. This'll teach those filthy bastards who's lovable. I like this callback to Fry returning home from his pelvis crushing night of snoo snoo in Amazon Women in the Mood. Can't we just cuddle? No! Deciding he needs a vacation and heads straight back to Amazonia. Enjoy Amazonia! Wearing the same outfit he wore in Fry and Leela's Big Fling. When Hermes and the professor go looking for a temp, they run into HGB and the remains of Evans, who we haven't seen since episode two. Good work, Evans. Thank you, sir. And before we meet Fred, Frank, his name was Frank. We see this jockey in the rotation, like the ones in The Luck of the Fryrish. Hey, what are you doing? This. During this guy's delivery montage of delivering a stork baby, giving Calculon his award, <laughs> that he's lucky he didn't beat him to death with, I respect and admire Harold Zoid too much to beat him to death with his own Oscar. And delivering to the robot mafia, there's a callback to vacuum cleaner bags that double as popcorn, like in Binderama. <laughs> While we see Zoidberg watching his Uncle Harold from That's Lobstertainment. Ben Beeler is back as a librarian, 
the show's attempt at building on their mispronunciation of words like ask. Hey, let me ask you something. Because he has it as ax on the sign, and that's fine. Except for the fact that I can think of two episodes off the top of my head where they clearly used library. Mars University and The Day the Earth Stood Stupid. The books at my local library. But hey, they can't get everything right. Like how they forgot Morris's mouth is sideways in last week's episode, only to draw it right this time. You can't win them all. We see Hermes' miniature filing cabinet from Lethal Inspection. In your portable filing cabinet? None of your beeswax! Getting stolen by the flying purple paper eaters. Also on the book planet, the professor says his iconic line, I'm already in my pajamas. I really ought to do something. But I am already in my pajamas. While also stripping down like he does in Xmas Story. Ah, risk. Did I mention there were a lot of references in this episode? Well, I'll say it again. Like Amy says this line both times they go back to Dalton B. Yuck, this place is even grosser than I remembered. Yuck, this place is even grosser than I remembered. And I know I didn't mention all of them, so let me know some of the ones you noticed down in the comments. Never read the first two, I didn't want to spoil it, you know? And I get it, if this isn't your kind of episode, it might be as forgettable as old what's-his-name. Like I care, I don't. But I like it. I'd say this season has gone three for three. I'm looking forward to next week's episode as Bender goes running with the bugs. Good times! Good times! Hit that like and subscribe button. Yep. Mm -hmm. Stay hip out there, y'all.